Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to start a new series on the Dell PowerEdge R430 server. In this video we're going to specifically focus on processors, but in this video series as a whole we're going to cover processors, RAM, hard drives, solid state drives, network cards. We're going to show you how to install VMware, how to install Windows Server, plus a whole bunch more. So click that like, smash that subscribe. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R430 server. As I mentioned, this video is going to be specifically focused on processors, so let's just hop in. There are two CPUs inside the R430 server. It's an LGA 2011-3 socket, which means it takes Intel Xeon E5, 2600, V3, and V4 series processors. If you're having any trouble getting your V4s to work, just make sure you have an updated BIOS. That would mean you probably have a pretty old system at that point because uh, most of the BIOS revisions along the way have it set up for the V4, but that has been an issue that we have run into where you get a super old system and you can't get the V4 to work, so just pop in an old V3 update the BIOS and you'll be good to go. Uh, one of the things that's a little bit uh, wonky or strange about the R430 uh, CPUs is the amount of DIMM slots that they um, that they cover and we'll show you that in a, in a minute. People ask us all the time, hey, uh, what CPUs do you recommend? And really it kind of depends on the application for your R430. We break it down into three categories. We have our low-end CPUs, our value CPUs, and our high-end CPUs. And really nowadays uh, the value CPUs are really kind of more the low-end CPUs. But let's Let's go ahead and start with the low end CPUs. There's two that we recommend that'll just be uh, dirty cheap. They're uh, they're almost free nowadays, not really, but the uh, the E5 2620V3 and the E5 2630V3. Those are going to be a six and eight core processor, and both of them are 2.4 gigahertz. And again, these are just really, really cheap nowadays. So if you're just looking for something super low in and the absolute cheapest proc you can throw in, those are going to be your winners right there. Now, as far as the value procs, we recommend several of them. We have the E5 2660V3, the E5 2670V3, and the E5 2680V3. That's going to be 10 core, 12 core, 12 core. It's going to be 2.6, 2.3, 2.5. Uh, great value CPUs. And really, again, those can almost be the low end ones nowadays because these are really, really cheap as well. So those are going to be some good procs that'll be uh, kind of your mid tier ones. Um, and now, what I really like are the high end CPUs. Uh, nowadays, you can get some, um, some V4 procs. You can put two of them in, and they really aren't going to break the bank. And you can really get a lot of processing power out of the 430. So I recommend five CPUs on the high end side and this is definitely what I think is more the sweet spot that's why there's five of them. Uh, it's the E5 2690 V4, the E5 2695 V4, the 97 V4, the 98 V4, and the 99 V4. It's going to be 14 core 18 core, 18 core, 20 core, 22 core. And again, think about this. You could throw in 20 to 40, I'm sorry, uh, uh, 40 to 44 cores into your box, and it's not going to totally break the bank. When you think about that nowadays for a brand new server, when we're making this video right now, the 16th Gen Dell servers just came out. So if you want to get that kind of processing power then, which obviously those processors are going to be way better as a whole, but if you wanted to get, let's just say, 20 cores or 220 cores out of those, it's just going to be crazy expensive. It's going to be a you know, $10,000, $20,000 box. Where you can do that with this for you know maybe a grand or two and that's what makes these such a big winner and uh, such a value for people out there and why people like to use them as a whole because you don't have to pay the new price tag but you can still get uh, a ton of processing power now of course anyone out there that's watching this I'm not even going to compare the 16th gen CPUs to 13th gen because they're obviously much much better um, no one's no one's uh, blowing smoke here telling you that they're not better uh, but as far as again just a good value deal uh, the high-end CPUs right now are a really good sweet spot for the 430 and the 630 for that matter where again you can get a lot of processing power for a cheap uh, cheap price overall. So, all right, now that we know a little bit about the uh, the CPUs and some of the, that, some of the items that we recommend, what we're going to do is show you how to physically install them. But before we do, I'm going to grab my ESD gear and be right back. All right, I have my ESD gear on. We are safe to work inside our machine. So I laid out everything that we're going to need for this upgrade. So all you're going to need is a Phillips head screwdriver, which you'll need to remove your heat sink and then reinstall it. Uh, I have a rag here, a nice clean rag to clean the thermal paste if it is too messy. Uh, sometimes it'll just get a little bit all over the place where you need to uh, just make sure you're uh, cleaning up uh, the bracket that actually holds the CPU down because if it's got too much old thermal paste, it could potentially kick off. You just don't want it to get into your uh, CPU pins. That's what I'm really trying to prevent. Um, and then a new thermal paste or thermal grease to install or to put onto our CPU. And then we have the CPUs that we're upgrading to. This is an E5 uh, 2698V4, one of the ones we recommend. So let's just go ahead and hop in. So we'll toss everything to the side. And we're going to go ahead and pop our latch 
and open our server like any server we've really been in before. So one of the things I want to po uh, point out is that there is an air baffle that we will need to remove. The air baffle is going to note that this is CPU 1 and this is CPU 2. And this is kind of a wonky configuration when you look at it as a whole. Let me uh, show you real quick when I take the air baffle off. The, the, the uh, CPU to memory DIMM slot counts a little strange. So on CPU 1, there's eight memory modules. On CPU 2, there's four memory modules, which is a little bit strange. Both of them do have four memory channels. It just happens to be up here on CPU 1, there's two DIMMs per channel, and back here on CPU 2, there's only one DIMM per channel. So again, it's kind of a, just a strange, wonky configuration as a whole. But nonetheless, we'll show you step-by-step -step instructions right now on how to remove your old CPU and to replace it with a new CPU. So uh, again, all you're going to use your Phillips head screwdriver. I like to uh, do kind of a zigzag pattern, so I'll start right here, then I'll come across, and I'll just work my way around. And I like to use a manual screwdriver personally, just can get a better feel for it as it's coming off of the uh, the motherboard as far as uh, the screw coming up. You can use an electric one, but um, you know it's faster, and uh, sometimes we have to do that because we have so many servers we need to process. But I'm a big fan of just the uh, the manual one personally. You can feel it coming up, really. You can see it too, for that matter. And this is a, another thing I noticed with the uh, the 430s. The heat sinks are on there really tight. They pop up. Uh, same with the um, the latches on the the uh, the CPUs. They're definitely a really tight. Uh, configuration. All right, so the other thing I want to note, when I take this off, I like to just flip it over right away uh, in case there is any old thermal paste on there. I don't want it uh, flaking off. So as soon as I lift it up, I pretty much just flip it over right away. And then I'll clean it off screen before I re uh, install it because you do need to uh, put your heatsink back on, of course, and you don't want the old thermal paste on there. So we'll get that all cleaned off before we reinstall it. So we're just going to lift this straight up and then flip it over. And so you can see there's a, a bunch of old uh, thermal paste. It's not too bad. It looks like it's in a very controlled environment, so that's easy. So we'll just clean it off screen and then we will remove our old CPU. All right, so in order to remove this, uh, there's a couple steps here, and really it's not that bad. You have two latches that you are going to need to push down and in. So we'll do this one first, push it down and in. Now this one, we're gonna push it down and in. And this, when this pops up, you'll notice right here, this is gonna actually open or free this up. So if you push this back down, it'll come up and you can lift this up. And now you have access to the actual CPU. So the next thing I'm gonna note is when you pull your CPU up, I like to grab it on the edges right here um, as opposed to right here. There's just a little bit more space for your fingers to get in. Now this uh, bar right here can be a little bit of a pain, but that's how I personally like to get it. And then when you lift it up, make sure you just pull it straight up. You don't want to drag it a little bit because the corner right here can just wipe out a row of pins uh, and it's really easy to do. So just make sure you just lift it straight up. So we'll go ahead and I'll show you right now how to do that. Just grab it and straight up, okay? So I have a tray over here that we're just gonna toss this into. So that's the nice thing about having the tray and having the empty slots, you can just toss it in there. And now I need to clean this off, so I will do that real quick off screen. And that definitely the old thermal paste sometimes is really caked on there, so having to use a little elbow grease on this one. Okay, so that is uh, good enough for right now. I would normally actually use a little spray uh, to just make it a little bit better, but you can see it's uh, much better as a whole. So we'll go ahead and toss this to the side. You'll see all the nasty thermal paste that uh, came off of it. So, all right, now uh, the next thing that is of importance here is we need to put in our new CPU in which way do we line it up, right? How do I install it? Well, what you want to look for is right here, there is a gold triangle. This triangle lines up with a white triangle that's right here on your motherboard. So it lets you know that this would be the proper way to install it. So again, I like to hold it on the sides right here, come straight down, and you're in. So the next thing that we're going to do is actually put this back down. So this will come down. This will go over. Just make sure that that covers over it. And then you're going to push this down and then push it in. It'll lock back into place. Same thing here. We're going to push this down and in, and it'll lock back into place. Now we're going to get our wonderful, messy thermal paste out. And we use the big tubes just because there's we use so much of the stuff. So we're just going to put, you don't really need to put a ton in there, just a little bit right in the middle. Some people like to use the little plastic piece and spread it around, which is fine too. Uh, what I like to do personally is... I will uh, just take the 
the heat, the clean heat sink, put it back down and it'll kind of smush it together and just spread it perfectly and evenly around. So that is what we are going to do right now is go ahead and reinstall our heat sink. So let's just line everything up nice and easy. Make sure your screws are in the holes. And then again, I like to do the same kind of zigzag pattern. I'll start over here. And because these uh, heat sinks are, as I said from the beginning, very tight, you do have to push kind of hard on this, which I'm not a fan of because I don't like, I like to be uh, very gentle with all of my electronics. Um, but you do have to kind of push this hard to make sure it actually gets into the hole. So if you're at home and you're wondering why you can't uh, get the heat sink back on, you probably just need to push a little bit harder. And it's not like that with a lot of the uh, 13th Gen Dell, like the 630s and the 730s and 730XDs. We build those on a daily basis. And I do, uh, do not really see that with the heat sinks, but for whatever reason, the 430s, they do just require a little bit of extra pressure. So just like that, we have uh, upgraded our old CPU, which, which was just a hex core uh, E52620 V3. And we've put in uh, an E5, 2698 v4 it's going to be a huge boost in performance i'm going to install another one back here and add a little bit of extra ram and this is going to be a great boost overall for our machine and for our r430 so if you made it this far hey click that like smash that subscribe and if you're looking for any cpu upgrades or even custom built servers we build dell hpe super micro ibm cisco we do new we do use we do spare parts we like to be a full service supplier if you need operating systems vmware whatever you need we are here to help you out. We'd love the opportunity to earn your data center or your home labs business. Please email us at sales at cloudengine.com. That's sales at cloudengine.com. And thanks for stopping by, guys. Take care.